Okay. Um, so next up is um, Jeff Mulligan. By the way, Mr. Jeff Mulligan is, is, is quite famous, judging by the size of his Wikipedia uh, entry, um, and invented a lot of uh, IPv6 and was a presidential innovation fellow along with me and Adam Riggs and Nina Bianchi and a number of the other people in this meeting. Uh, take it away, Jeff. So, hey, hey, everybody, thanks for that, Rob. Uh, I'm not sure that, that famous is, should be judged by how long a Wikipedia page you have, but, um, but that's okay. Uh, so um, one of the things that, um, and obviously you can tell that, uh, um, I'm, I guess I'm missing a D here, but oh, there we go. Um, uh, one of the things, Rob, I think that you may have skipped over a little bit, I think that was really important in, in when you and Lori and I were starting to work on Ventmon was the idea of composability of a, uh, a ventilator. I know you touched on it, um, but the idea being, you know, there are a bunch of separate pieces and that building one monolithic system, we don't, we're, we've learned that we don't do that in software and I don't think we should necessarily do that in a, in a ventilator. And so PERDS was, was critically important with the idea of being able to separate some of this functionality. And then that led to this uh, part of this uh, idea of being able to build a uh, open um, an openly available data lake. Um, the goals of the data lake itself were that we wanted to have it in the cloud. Um, uh, we didn't necessarily want uh, to, re to rely on anything that, that had to be on site or on premise. But at the same time, we didn't want it to um, uh, exclude that possibility. We didn't know at the beginning how many ventilator Ventmon uh, projects might be out there. I, and so we wanted to make sure that it was scalable, but I think um, the next two were probably the most important um, at, throughout the entire design process was the idea that it needed to be uh, based on open protocols um, and also be protocol agnostic. So if somebody wanted to use IPv4 or IPv6 or whatever, um, uh, it, it was necessary. Uh, we designed the data lake using this concept of, of just generic APIs um, uh, so that, and, and, and that um, but we, Rob and, and Lori and I had, had uh, um, come across the ESP32. Uh, if you haven't been playing with that, you should go out and buy one. You can, you can buy them for a couple of bucks. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Um, uh, programmable through Arduino, we were able to build a, a very tiny um, application on the Arduino uh, to, and to be able to uh, utilize a, a simple API to send data up into the cloud um, so that, as Rob mentioned, uh, folks could collaborate on the output of what a ventilator um, or a, 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 how a ventilator was, was operating. Um, Let's see, so the, the, uh, the basic design of the, the, uh, the, the data lake itself, um, it can run, uh, it's, it's some, uh, some C code, and as Rob said, the, the display is, is based on some uh, JavaScript. Um, it's currently, if you, if you go out to Ventmon, um, uh, it's currently running on a T2 micro server from AWS, which means it can run on a, uh, a free instance, a free tier instance. Um, it's being served up currently through an Apache HTTP server. Uh, if you happen to like Nginx, uh, we're certainly not dependent upon it. The microservices, as we talked about, um, the URL slash uh, the IP address of the Ventmon itself um, slash JSON uh, is, is how to um, access the data or slash breadth plot in order to get a uh, um, visibility of that. Uh, the, um, in addition to the display portion, there is a really trivial listener um, uh, that can be either standalone. So I, I wrote this listener as, as uh, C. I'm a dinosaur, so I still write code in C because um, it, it, it tends to run pretty fast. Uh, so uh, the, the code, which is available publicly um, as all things public convention, 
Uh, it's a, uh, it can run either as a standalone application, a standalone listener. It can be started through INET-D if you know what that is, or it can also um, act as a uh, um, input from HTTP, again, whether that's Apache or, or Nginx. Uh, it will listen both on uh, using TCP or UDP. Everything uh, that comes in and out is, uh, is through JSON. Um, there is no, uh, in order to be sort of fast and, and simple, there is no massive database behind it. It's a bunch of uh, just flat files. Um, and it, it supports the public invention respiratory data standards, the PERDs. Um, here's an example. If you go to the, the, uh, the website, uh, the Ventmon website um, over here uh, is, it, uh, you can see all the ventilators that are producing data. Uh, this page is dynamically created as a new ventilator starts sending data. It populates this. If you click on any of the, uh, the links that, that would be on here, um, you can either get access to the raw data, you can get access to uh, JSON output, or uh, you can get access to the JavaScript. Um, lastly, some lessons that, that, that can be learned from all of this. The logger is, as I said, it, it's, it's really tiny and trivial. Um, you could probably you know, write it in a few lines of, of uh, um, Python, uh, but it's about 800 lines of C. Again, it's, it's freely available. It runs on a free tier system. Currently, we've captured, um, as you can see, the statistics from 23 sites, uh, a whole bunch of data. Um, in our first incantation, uh, I wrote the Arduino to send data uh, using TCP and, and pushing the data through an HTTP call. Uh, this actually worked perfectly fine, um, but we were, in, in order to try to get to the scaling that Rob felt was necessary in order to provide real breadth plots, um, that would be usable by anybody. We realized that, uh, and Rob had a goal of, of being able to send data at about 40 hertz. Um, and, and so uh, HTTP, especially we started thinking about links that might have a lower bandwidth. If you understand all the details of HTTP um, and the round trips and, and all of the acts and everything else that's necessary for that, um, we actually had a problem with the Arduino keeping up with that. So um, we, we switched the code over. I switched over to using a UDP, rewrote the listener to support UDP, and it can now easily keep up. Um, for the, any of you that are, are uh, uh, protocol nerds, you might ask, why didn't we use MQTT? Um, uh, and I think that that actually would be a, a really interesting next step for us to look at. Um, and if you understand MQTT, it means that you could have lots of devices that publish and then lots of separate pieces that, again, the idea of composability, um, separate, uh, separate systems that might be um, uh, subscribed to that data. So lots of people could look at, at uh, um, a consistent set of data. Really quickly, so that's, a, that's, a, that's it, Rob. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, ben, you're up next. Let's uh, give it up for Jeff Mulligan. Thank you. Way to go. Woohoo. Yeah.